This is our second laboratory experiment, the use of chemical balances. And this is the first one where you'll use photos to gather data. Uh, we didn't do that, it wasn't necessary in experiment one, but in all the rest of the experiments, you'll be using photos. Uh, when you're asked to make an observation or when you're asked to make a measurement of some sort, you use a photo to gather that data. If you have trouble locating the photos, uh, send me an email and, and I'll help you find them. Uh, it's not a difficult experiment, and I think you'll learn some interesting things about uh, chemical balances, uh, but it's an easy experiment to lose points, and, and uh, primarily when it comes to significant figures. So always keep those in mind. If you're multiplying and dividing, remember that you count significant figures. If you're adding and subtracting, then you count decimal points. So I don't think your data will be an error uh, causing you to lose points. It might be if you ignore significant figures. Uh, you'll be weighing some coins, one, two, three, four, and five coins. And because we're very sure of those numbers, they're called exact numbers. And when you've got an exact number, like three coins, it has an infinite number of significant figures. Uh, and so applying the rules for significant figures, exact numbers, uh, would not be the limiting factor on the number. Let's look at, at uh, a graphing skill. Graphing your data might be one of the harder things that you do in this particular experiment. And if graphing is tough for you, maybe review Appendix A, where it talks about that. Uh, up here on the vertical axis, I've got the mass in grams of the coins. Down here is the number of coins. And as you weigh a coin, one coin for example, you'll come up with a certain mass for that. If I go up in the vertical direction from one coin, come across from the mass, that constitutes a point that you'll place on your graph. You'll do the same thing for two coins. Go up until and then come across with the weight of two coins and place another x at that point. And do the same for three, four, and five. And then after you've gathered those five pieces of information, you'll draw a straight line that, that uh, best matches the, the, uh, the points. And then that's the graph. And when you get information from the graph, uh, in particular, you're interested in uh, the slope of the graph. And the slope is the y value over the x value. And, and it really doesn't matter where you gather that data because it's a straight line. The slope is the same all the way along the line. And so it'll be this distance, which you'll read over here, over this distance, which you'll read down here. That's the slope. One of the data blanks asks for the slope. And uh, be sure to gather that information from your graph because uh, you could gather it by, by uh, dividing five coins by five and coming up with a, a numerical number. But that, that number might have more significant figures than if you gather the data from the graph. So we'll be able to tell uh, whether or not you're using the graph. So be sure and use the graph. Uh, the last little tip is that in the, in the very last table, 2.12, the bottom line, asks for the instructor's signature, and of course you don't need that.